Want to better understand yourself, others, and the best path for your life? Welcome to Authentic Living, podcast for a better life. The podcast where we delve into life themes and how learning who you authentically are can change your entire life. Here are your hosts, John Boris and Kim Ely. Hi, so we are so excited because we are starting another episode of Authentic Living. And I'm your co-host, Kim Ely, and I am here with John Boris. Whoa. Hello. And John, we have an amazing special guest today, and it is Melissa Wells. And oh my goodness, you guys have been working together for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And Melissa comes to us. uh, She also has a background in the assessment business. So we're super curious to talk about that and also talk about authentic systems and how it relates to relationships. So to kick us off, Melissa, how did y'all meet? Well, um, I went to a women in business conference in Santa Cruz and I met this coach who, uh, Linda Hardenstein, who does She does a lot of coaching for career counseling for uh, lawyers, mostly professionals. And she found out that I was in the assessment business. Um, I'm a founder of a co-founder of Five Dynamics, which is a learning style employee development tool that's being used by Fortune 100 companies throughout the world. And I started that with my father years ago and we sold the business, but I was still very much interested in human psychology and what makes people tick and happy and mostly about relationships. So my role in Five Dynamics was to create relationship files and dyads. I created a grid for that and got people to understand how it, how they would get along in teams of two. Excellent. So when Linda found out about my background, she's like, oh, you have to meet the guy that I work with because he assesses my clients. And I thought, okay, I will. And so I went to his office in Carmel and it had, you know, 800,000 books. And the- <laughs> I think maybe now he has 8,020,000. I don't know. He got a lot of books. And I was very impressed by his work. It was so very simple and beautiful. And it goes very deep. But the Life Themes is such a wonderful tool to get people to understand humanity. And it is simple. Anybody can understand which of the life themes is more prominent in their life. And I found the greatest way to find out really who you are is to find out who you like to be with. Ooh, awesome. So real yeah. quick for uh, potential new listeners, give us a quick description of the four life themes, John. Yeah, they're the four life themes are um, uh, uh, love and justice, wisdom and power. And you identify love in in the terms of caring. The wisdom is identified by being curious. Justice is about relationships. And power is about being in action. Fantastic. Awesome. You have all four, but one dominates. There we go. Cool, cool, cool. Great recap. So to take it back to you, Melissa. So were you introduced to John by Linda? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So when I met him, I was on the way out after the business had been handed over and I was kind of reinventing myself and not sure Mm -hmm. which direction to go in. And I was very, very impressed and intrigued by his work. So I started to work with him and eventually helped him with the book that you ended up finishing and writing. And the second book too, I put together from all of the, just the reams of stuff that John writes about. So I'm able to really organize his stuff and put it together in a coherent way. And I'm very excited by doing that. It's something that I really love to do is work with intellectual property. Yeah. But the real value of what he does comes when I actually explain it to people when I'll say, oh, you know, you're having an issue with that person because it sounds like they are a X, Y, Z and you are Mm -hmm. an ABC. And so this is how the four of these archetypes work with one another. And when I explain it within five minutes, the lights are going off with people. They're getting it. They're going, oh, my gosh, no wonder my sister is like that. Or no wonder my husband and I are da, da, da. So it's very, very, very powerful with relationships, I think. And, you know, learning about your purpose and, you know, learning where your actual uh, I like the four life themes because it tells you 
what your niche is, like what part of the road you should really be in. And okay. because I'll find myself trying to move into another lane and I go, I don't belong in that lane. <laughs> I, I belong in this the wrong lane. lane. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the wrong lane. Awesome. And it always, it always feels like that. So yeah. So anyhow, and awesome. um, I love it when he goes on and on about how much he loves Kierkegaard. It's just, I never <laughs> met anybody who loved Kierkegaard as much as this man. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, question for you, John. How soon after you and Melissa met, did you give her the authentic systems assessment to take? Here she is, an assessment expert. Well, it was um, uh, very close to when I first met her because uh, she, I told her what I was up to. She was very intrigued. And I sat down and uh, I did do an assessment and uh, she enjoyed it and was intrigued by it, as she said. And then uh, we went off to uh, the next step. She also helped me generate a site on the internet and did uh, some writing. And we've been back and forth ever since we started 10 years ago. Excellent. Excellent. And Melissa, please reveal to us, what is your life theme? So I'm a justice. Aha. Yes, I'm a justice. I know. High, high in the wisdom side of justice. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I, I'm not the most loving justice person you'd want to be. <laughs> You're too funny. I wouldn't so- have it any other way. So so if I could jump in and and say, and you've alluded to this, but that justice life theme is a combination of uh, wisdom and love. And so when you're saying that you're high on the wisdom, lower on the love, that doesn't mean that you don't love people because we know you do, but that, that the wisdom is stronger. Is that correct? Yeah. It's more dominant. Yeah. Gotcha. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I also like to interject here. You might find that there's many people uh, in this uh, series that may be justice and wisdom. There's a reason for that, because it's the wisdom side that brings people to this information that they're seeking for. Okay. Yeah. That is so. So true. it's not true. like the this the the model is always finding justice. No, it's mm-hmm. just that they're being attracted by the information. Fantastic. Yeah, and- as as a justice person, I what I found interesting is, you know, I'm not interested in law, although I do have a lot of friends who are attorneys and in the business of, you know, civic duty and, and law. But what I found interesting, because uh, I'm actually a fine artist, that is my background and a musician. Mm-hmm. And so when John was explaining that justice really is about finding symmetry and balance, well, that totally works with doing art projects or even engineering, because I'm a techie ter- too. But when you're painting or doing music, you're finding like the perfect balance to, oh, now it works or now it doesn't work, this kind of thing. And that to me is my balancing act. But the other piece of justice that I also find interesting that he, that's not really, it doesn't make sense in a way, right away, is that justice people are really into self-improvement. So all the personal growth people, that sort of genre of folk is also a justice type person because it it's interested in the wisdom and the psychology of people, but because it has a love in it, it also wants to take care of humanity. So it's like kind of like I see problems with humanity and I want to apply some wisdom to make everybody better. And so Uh you see that a lot too. So I thought that you know, then it was like, oh, yeah, I guess I'm justice. There's no getting around it. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Because <laughs> I would love to be power, but it's just not going to happen. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm curious to know, Melissa, after the assessment, how have you used what you've learned about the life themes and authentic systems in your own personal and professional life? Okay. That's a great question. Well, it's... Again, like I said, it helps me stay in my lane, mm-hmm. you know, because I am such a curious person and I like to try on different hats. I'll find myself getting kind of sucked into the world of love. And then I'll, I'll be like, yeah, you know, I'll wait, oh, I'll wake up, wake up. Okay, <laughs> let's, get, let's get, stop being so emotional here and let's put on your, you know, Athena wisdom cap and get clear and have some clear thinking about it. And the other th- curious thing about it came from the deeper reading which is the authentic reading where he talks about your authentic self and your synthetic self and the rejuvenator, those three parts of who we are that make up who we are. And so what he told me, it was so simple, but it solved all of my problems. Mm. So there's one, my authentic, which is the timeless 
part of whom I who I am, which you might call my soul or spiritual part, is very spiritual and it's holographic. So I am this like I really do think in a holographic way, and John does too. So the two of us can go bing bing bing. <laughs> <laughs> but mine is much more connected to the spiritual world, mm-hmm. and I really am like I really. He says, "Well, you're just you're like right here in heaven. Oh, you're so close." Because I feel like that's just like oh man, I can get so out there. I can get way out there in a very beautiful way, mm-hmm. but my synthetic is highly efficient. It is like ah. uh, it's a slice and dice machine. And I always wondered how I could be <laughs> so really, I, I mean, so managing time and, you know, bossing people around and getting stuff going and getting stuff done. And at the same time, have this like bizarre experience inside of my head and, and abstractly how I am in the world is pretty out there, but I'm able to really just go into this other mode where it's just high efficiency, kill two birds with one stone, let's get it done. And thank Mm -hmm. goodness, because I'm able to take really high abstract concepts and, and whittle them down into a very simple form, and then make something from it. So to see that as, as a part of who I am was Mm -hmm. to be recognized as Mm -hmm. usually what happens when he does do readings, I've seen this with people, to really be recognized for their incredibly unique formula of who they are as a person. It's amazing. It's amazing to to have really been uh, read by him was was just eye opening. Oh, that's fantastic! Yeah, yeah. And I'm curious to know, John, what did Melissa add to uh, Authentic Systems once y'all first started collaborating? What I enjoy is her unique perspective, and 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 also the depth that we went because mm-hmm. uh, some people want to approach it from a cursory position and let's solve this one problem. But Melissa really wanted to get deeper and deeper and deeper. And so what happened is that helped me uh, research deeper and deeper and deeper as well. And so that was the, a great benefit. The, the other is, is that what I wanted to know is just not, people want to want, hmm. right? Mm-hmm. The question is, why do they want to want? Hmm. And what is motivating that chain of events? And so this is where I can get to but she was a very willing participant. And so we both really got deeper than I usually do. Oh, excellent. Fantastic. And John, what is your life theme? Wisdom. Wisdom. So no wonder, I think that was probably an excellent balance. I was about to say symbiosis. I don't think I'm using that word correctly. Um, (laughs) Collaboration. Right. But uh, so I want to make a point. Yes. What wisdom pe- uh, justice people can do that I cannot mm-hmm. is balance and see both sides. Okay. I'm not geared that way. Mm-hmm. What happens with a love person or a wisdom person is mm-hmm. it's wisdom. I want to know. And it's a straight line. Mm-hmm. I care for the love people. It's a straight line. Mm-hmm. And power is too a straight line. Justice is the only one that has that balance back and forth. They're the ones. And so that's why they make great counselors. Ah, excellent. Coaches. Oh, yes. Excellent. And so anyway, so I just want to make that point is that I can learn to find balance, but it has to be trained and I would never be good at it. Ah. But now I don't want to be because it's not something I need to fix. What you do is you really absorb who you are, in fact, and you accept that. And realize that that's your contribution to society. Oh, I love that. I think that's a good segue to Melissa. We were going to talk a bit about relationships between the life themes. So that might be a good place to to talk a little bit about that. Okay, I, I love it. I think when we start talking about relationships and who, the life theme work is that for me, the real value comes from the relationship side and understanding which groups are bonding together. I completely recognized the clicks that are formed between love and justice. That's Mm -hmm. like one click. Those people tend to hang a lot, a (laughs) lot. And families tend to kind of converge like that. And then they have friends that tend to be the same, right? So you're seeing these kind of clicky love justice. And the same with wisdom and power. Those people, I mean, I... I can't tell you like how many times I've been to a party. I've been like, 
and especially in Palo Alto. This is a power wizard party if I have ever <laughs> been to one. <laughs> And then I can, you know, I love justice. You can totally tell there's a whole different feel, but these people tend to group up together and they tend to mate too, successfully. Ah, Yeah. Gotcha. So describe what's different in a wisdom power party that, that you wouldn't find in a love justice party. Well, not many people are dancing on the tables. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone's pretty well behaved. (laughs) Not, not oh so gosh. much at your love justice barbecues, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So what's the dynamic that works well with the wisdom and power together? Well, this is, do you want to talk about that, John, or do you want me to go? Well, the only thing I would say is that power finds their power through knowledge. Mm. And so the wisdom people actually support the power people. The other issue is the wisdom people are not focused on power. There was a CEO in Silicon Valley who's talking about the techies and how they knew the insides of all the patents that they had. And he said, I never worry about anything being stolen because they're not after the power. They want to express their wisdom. They want to learn. And so that's the difference. So wisdom and power work very well together because power is wisdom. People let power be powerful and the power will let wisdom people teach them. Ooh, I love that. Awesome. So tell you what, we're going to take a short break, but when we come back, I'd like to learn more about those dancing on the table parties because that sounds (laughs) fantastic. And then we can also talk about how some of the life themes maybe don't get along quite as well. So we will be right back. After a quick break, John and Kim will be back with more of Authentic Living, podcast for a better life. Welcome back to Authentic Living, podcast for a better life. Here's John Voris and Kim Ely. Thank you so much for joining us again. And we've been having the most wonderful discussion with Melissa Wells. And yeah. Melissa, true confession, you are a justice life theme. Would we ever catch you at a love justice party dancing on a table? Yes, and I would be dragging a lot of love people with me. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be the first ones to come up with me. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so tell us a little bit. I'm curious about how the authentic systems life themes might play in a family dynamic. Well, yeah, luckily I've had a lot of experience with that because I have quite a few half step, lots of remarriages in my family. Mm -hmm. And so my parents, my father was wisdom and my mother was love. Mm. And so they begat me justice. (laughs) (laughs) So really, it really was a combination of wisdom and love, but wisdom and love, you know, not, that's pretty hard. That's a hard relationship. I can't speak to it, but I know John has had some experience with love people. Yeah. John, Um, can you give us some insights on that? Yeah, it depends on the topic you're engaged with, but mostly, especially like in marriages, love and wisdom don't get along very well. The reason why is because the love person never knows enough and the wisdom person is not empathetic enough. Mm, So that's usually what happens. And then of course, when they look at life itself, the love person will be more interested in caring for people and the wisdom person might be someone who wants to project the future and see certain steps need to be made now for the future but the love person says wait a minute it's gonna be a lot of sacrifice i don't think we need to do this or that and so that usually is a problem and then that really does now when you have a project that, that's shared they can get along gotcha that's different gotcha. but not in, a, in an intimate relationship gotcha so yeah Melissa, wisdom Yeah. Well, wisdom people, both power and wisdom, what they have in common is they can really depersonalize Hmm. situations. They don't take things as personal. And that, however, means that they expect you to not take things so personally and just, these are the facts. This is what needs to be done. Just give me the, and, or with wisdom people, please don't color this information up too much. I just want the spreadsheet. Don't highlight with your damn colors. I need just the information. And there's love people putting stickers all over it. And just as people just not giving it to you at all, because it's not perfect. And, you know, it can drive wisdom and power people crazy. 
but that's where totally that's see that. the game. <laughs> yeah. So my wisdom father remarried a power woman and they got along great. And I, I was very close to both of them. And they both had children who were both power kids. So mm-hmm. my half siblings are power on that side. Mm-hmm. Now, what happened was my folks had a lot of friends who were power and wisdom people, mm-hmm. all of them, like they, you would go to any event and I would be like, oh my God, there wasn't a single, I'm the only justice person here. Like I'm the, I'm it, I'm it. <laughs> <laughs> So I find it really curious. So when I realized that I really saw John's work live, like with the groupings, and I always thought that love and justice people got along because of my past experience of being an artist. And I would say most artists and musicians tend to veer on the love justice side. You'll find some wisdom people in there who would be more techie. And they're the ones who are like, you know, agonizing over what string to use on their guitar. And, you know, this is the best thing for this. And they're they're building their own guitars and that kind of stuff. But for the most part, when you're talking, you know, that kind of creative spontaneity, you're going to get a lot of love justice people. So I'm used to those groups of people, mm-hmm. the dancing on the speaker types and the <laughs> tables and this kind of thing. And I used to think they flocked together because of the common interest. But in fact, I think they're flocking together because love and justice people really merge. Mm. And the, I love it when um, I have a lot of friends who are love, right? And some of them drive me crazy because <laughs> they just talk about their feelings all the time. <laughs> ah, that's too funny. <laughs> and, you know, it's fine for But then you're like, okay, can we just table this now? Because like, I know how angry you are at your cousin for saying that. Okay, I get it. And John said, and it was so beautiful the way he said it. He said, you know, Mel, you need the love. You need mm. those love people in your life. And I do. I If I don't have a love person around, I feel very cold and lonely. Mm. And I have some justice friends, but there's nothing like a love friend. They just bring, they just open my heart. I feel free with them. I feel at ease. I feel non-judged at all. I actually feel smart because they're always asking me, you know, what do you think? Like, no one asked me that except love people. <laughs> what do you think, Mel? Oh, really? Wow, I'm flattered. Awesome. Yeah. Oh so, my gosh. and then love people benefit from justice people because they get the wisdom without the judgment. Mm-hmm. Right. Definitely. So a love person can ask any sort of, you know, insane question that they want. <laughs> Just this person will try to answer it best they can without saying, you know, that question's a little interesting, you know. So yeah, but John's saying that Mel, you need the love. I was like, gosh, I really do. I really do. Oh, that's great. So yeah. John, share a little bit with us about that. What is it about the justice people who need the love people? Well, with justice, then they have two aspects to themselves. Let's say Mel is 70 to 80 percent wisdom. 30 to 20 percent love. I'm just throwing this out as an arbitrary number. So you see that there is an imbalance because we can't, if, if it was balanced 50-50, she some some justice people go through paralysis. They can never make a decision. Oh. They really have a hard time. And they go to counseling to try to find out what is their, their problem. And the problem that they're engaged with is seeing both sides. Now there's a way to get around that, but they need to be assessed to do that. So if you're at 70 to 30 percent, then this 30 percent needs to be built up some way. And so it's done by being with love people. Mm -hmm. So in being with love people, she actually can find some balance in that period of time. Uh, That's awesome. And also, I wanted to say that what she's talking about and what we're all here talking about is each one love, justice, wisdom and power represents a world view. Mm. So where she's describing the worldview and engaged with predictive behavior, mm. very important. So she's saying, when I'm with love people, this is what happens. When I'm with justice people, this is what happens. Well, this system is designed to have a predictive quality to it with regards to archetypes. So I don't know what anybody's going to do in the next five minutes, but I will know why they're doing it. Awesome. What is one of the ways that people can pick up and recognize, oh my gosh, I'm talking with a justice theme or I'm talking with a power life theme? Okay, let's ask Mel. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I actually think the best way to approach that is to, when you're with someone, 
mm-hmm. and you think that they're a power person, what is your reaction? Mm. That kind of thing. So if you're a love person mm-hmm. and you think about people who are the power people in your life, I mean, you could have a sister or an aunt or boss or a com- you know, peer, neighbor, best friend, or even a husband wife but if you're a love person and you're in the vicinity of a power person you're gonna gonna start feeling like you're getting bullied a bit Mm -hmm. and you're getting bossed around you're not like that one bit because there's a part of you that feels like you're not being recognized for your feelings and you're just like constantly being told what to do in a way right Mm -hmm. and so then you know that you're a love person because you're feeling a little victimized there's gonna be this like feeling of like, oh, I'm like this person is, is totally gonna run run me over. Ah, right. <laughs> now, if I'm a justice person with a power person, I'm very anti-authority. So mm-hmm. justice people, what they lack most is power, and what they want is power. Mm-hmm. So when I'm with power people previously, or if I'm unconscious about it, I start to get really anti-authority. And I start mm-hmm. to say, uh, no, you know, and just <laughs> You know, no. like, uh, I don't think so. But now knowing that power people are incredibly valuable and I actually do love the power people in my life and they have been incredibly helpful because a lot of people, power people are about empowerment, about empowering people mm. and helping other people. But I will know first right off when I'm with a power, like a justice with a power, it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to feel like no. Right. <laughs> the answer is no. No. Right. Does that make sense, John? <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. And um, a very good point is the idea is that once you become aware of these aspects of humanity, you can have control over how you feel about them. Whereas people who are not assessed, they are in reaction to something they don't understand. It's just, I just feel this way. I don't know why. But now you have control over it rather than having it control over you. Right. Absolutely. I'll speak from experience, having also been assessed, and I am a love person. Um, (laughs) So I find frequently in my business as a a small business or or as an entrepreneur, when I talk with people, I will observe their language and I can usually react and figure out which life theme they are. Melissa, I was going to ask you, I'm guessing that you probably have a similar reaction when you meet people for the first time do you have a different way of reacting to people based on what life theme they are yeah I think well again it's I you know my heart is much more open to people now and what they represent and the diversity of their archetypes I think it's everybody is welcome and when I feel like a wisdom is giving me too many directions like I'm trying to get home and they're giving me these directions that are just ad infinitum oh no no don't use your gps <laughs> listen to me there's a blue house okay you're going to go straight blue house to left and in front of the house is a is a tree with a swing and i think the swing was put up by the owner about 12 years ago <laughs> right they go, really you're right you know and then i'll be okay but instead of being impatient it's like this wisdom person needs to go through the process of distilling the information in order to, and I just have to be there and go, wow, this is amazing to be with this, to be with this person who has all this data and who just wants to do this. And the same thing with a power person. It's like, okay, you go girl, you just, you take that and you go. If I can help you out, let me know. So yeah, I do react and I try to be supportive of their archetype. I love that. I think that's important. I think that's powerful that it makes you more cognizant, but also more open to other people. Yeah, um, absolutely. So John, I'll, yeah. I'll pose this to you. Do you find that happens frequently once people are assessed and once they understand life themes? Yes, the first thing that happens is self-acceptance. Mm-hmm. They realize there's nothing to fix, only something to be aware of. And the other, second is they realize that some people around them are imposing standards in areas that they can't possibly meet because they're different people. So Mm -hmm. if someone wants me to be highly technical and with regards to computers, it's not happening. (laughs) It's not happening. And so now I could do two things. I could say, okay, I'm a wisdom person and a theoretical wisdom person, so I don't need to be there. On the other hand, what a lot of people do is they beat themselves up. And then I'm going to go to a course on computers. I'm learning everything I can about computers. And I'm going to be miserable doing it. 
And when I get out, I will not be as good as anybody that really is detailed, detail oriented, systematic oriented. So this is a way to say, this is my contribution here. And no, I'm not going to be highly technical. I'm not going to be engaged in, in computers. And, and I'm fine with that. That's the point. Self-acceptance. And then they turn that around and their acceptance of other people. Ooh, love that. Melissa, what have you seen or experienced in acceptance of other people? You touched on it a little bit. Do you have any specific examples that have happened in your life where you're like, aha, I understand why this person is like this? Yeah, all over the place. I mean, everybody. Everybody, I, I couldn't even, and I think too, I've just been doing this for so long that I can't even remember a time when I didn't know this because everybody <laughs> that I've known in my past, I've assessed in my head. I've gone, yes. yeah, oh yeah, that's, that's a love person. And now I understand why that happened and this happened and, and this and all of it. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So Kim, share your experience with a love client. I mean, a power client you had. Absolutely. So yes, as a love person, I had a power client, potential client, and, and we got on the phone together and I was like, good Lord have mercy. This woman is pushy. I was like, I don't understand. She kept name dropping. She was all about, well, you know, it, cause I am a publisher. It's like, well, well, you know, what kind of attention will I receive because of this book and things like that? And I was like, what the devil lady, you know, what, why, why are you doing this? Anyway, what I understood afterwards, I was like, oh, I get it now. I get it where she's coming from. You know, I, I had a, another conversation with her because she was a potential client at the time. And I was able to speak to her more in her language and understand. And it, like you were talking about, both of y'all were talking about, it's that self-acceptance, but also the self-awareness that, oh, she's not trying to bully me. She's not trying to pressure me. This is just who she is. And I realized she was very insecure. She, as a power person, really wanted people to love her, but she was very insecure about it. And it changed my whole viewpoint. Instead of being like, get away, I was like, oh, okay, okay, let, let, let's work on this together. So it turned out to be a great relationship, but I had to speak her language. <laughs> yeah, no, it totally right. helps. And the underpinning of all of this is love. So love is the universal truth and love is the force that drives all of these themes, mm. you know, so we can say love is a quadrant, but there's also just the love that permeates the entire thing and drives all of us to behave and to be the way we are. Cause we just love, I just love justice. I love the balancing. I love it. I could do it all day. I don't want to stop. You know. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Well, oh my goodness. This has been such an amazing discussion <gasps> and I've gotten so much out of this. Melissa, thank you so much for being our guest. Absolutely. And, um, yes, if, thank you. Absolutely. And we're going to have show notes. So we'll include your information in the show notes. Mm -hmm. And John, if somebody would like to reach out and uh, have an assessment or learn more about Authentic Systems, how do they get in touch with you? Email me at john at authentic-systems.com. Fantastic. And I know now when I have a party that, Melissa, I'm going to pull you on the table with <laughs> me. <laughs> I'm already there. I'm already there with Kim. Fantastic. <laughs> Excellent. Well, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for listening and tune in next time. And if you have a question, please uh, share it with us. We would love to hear it. So thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been fun. <laughs>